What's up, Brew Crew? Opie here. Welcome back to my Brew City garden. So if you saw my last video, uh, you know that I spotted a pest on my sunflowers and eating my corn, and I was uh, not very happy about it. Uh, this particular pest, known as the Japanese beetle, uh, seems to be becoming more and more prevalent as the years go by. It is an invasive species, uh, so that it has no natural predators, uh, which can make it very difficult to eradicate or control. But uh, I'm going to talk about today exactly what the life cycle is and how perhaps you can help prevent Japanese beetle infestations in your garden. I was out here inspecting the garden the other day, um, just taking a look around as I always do. And it's always good to keep up on your garden um, daily. Uh, and I happen to notice that in my corn, I had some of my leaves that were being eaten. And it's a very telltale pattern where the leaves are being skeletonized. And as soon as I seen that, I thought, oh no, here we go again. Uh, I was fairly certain of what the pest was. Uh, I was fairly certain it was the Japanese beetles. So, and it did take me very long to spot them. So whenever you see your leaves being skeletonized like this and it's midsummer, uh, there's a very good chance that you're dealing with Japanese beetles. Now, uh, now the Japanese beetle is an invasive species that uh, now can be found uh, pretty much all across North America, uh, in Europe, and in Asia. So uh, they uh, are pretty much everywhere, and they are spreading every year. Uh, their, their swath gets larger and larger. So uh, they really are becoming a major, a major problem. So when you first see Japanese beetles, you can pretty much expect about a six week period uh, where you'll see them in the garden. And it's extremely important to stay on top of them. Um, Japanese beetles release a pheromone. So when they find a food source uh, that they like, they will release a pheromone that will literally attract thousands more Japanese beetles to your garden. So it's very important to stay on top of them. Uh, as soon as you see them, you want to pick them, you want to squash them, you want to do uh, take whatever steps that you want to take to eliminate them. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you uh, one solution. Uh, it's typically going to be a multifaceted solution to help keep the Japanese beetles under control. I don't think there's really any way to completely get rid of them. Uh, it's just a matter of controlling them. Now, my first method of defense is typically uh, going to be the most simple method of defense, and that's going to be a bucket of soapy water. So I just take some tap water, put a few drops of soap in there, shake it up a little bit, and I will just come through and hand pick the Japanese beetles, and I will place them in the water, and they will very quickly drown. Um, and it's actually very effective. Now, these beetles, you don't have to worry about them biting you. They're not going to bite you or anything crazy like that. Uh, and typically, if you hold the bucket underneath of them and just touch the, touch the beetle, uh, it seems like their natural defense is just to fall straight down. So uh, hold the bucket underneath of them, touch the beetle, they'll roll off the leaf right into your bucket of water. Uh, very simple, very effective. Uh, the only problem with that is you've really got to stay in the garden. So, and I will during this, during the Japanese beetle season, I will be out in the garden several times a day and at night uh, hand picking. And, you know, I know it seems like a huge pain in the butt, but really it's one of the most effective uh, methods for controlling the Japanese beetles. Again, you'll want to get them as quickly as possible before they release those pheromones and bring all their friends to your garden. So the faster you can catch them and kill them, uh, the better off you're going to be. So again, the soapy water solution is a very simple but very effective method. Um, it, as you can see, there's a Japanese beetle right here at the tip of my finger on this uh, ground cherry leaf. And essentially, I'm just going to set my bucket underneath of it and just swipe the beetle right into the bucket of water and that's it. Uh, they will quickly drown. You'll see them swim in there, but they will not be able to get out of this uh, bucket of water uh, because I did put the soap in there, which breaks the surface tension of the water, uh, which makes it pretty much impossible for the, for the beetle to escape. Um, and some folks say that if you take the, the beetles themselves 
and grind them up and make um, like a spray or spread the ground Japanese beetles in the garden, that that will also uh, deter the beetles. Now, I can't speak to whether or not that's the truth, but um, it sounds like fun. Oh, see, we just had one fly in right here, so we'll just come in, get him. Boom, right in the bucket, no problem. I seen another one right over here. You know, again, once they take hold, once they release those pheromones, they will be all over the place. Here's another one. Right in the bucket you go. And if you take a look there, this is just a few minutes of picking. I mean, and there's probably uh, 20 beetles in there or so, just from a few minutes. So uh, once you start finding these things in the garden, chances are you're really gonna find a lot of them. So that's very important to stay on top of these guys. Now, another thing that makes these Japanese beetles difficult to control, as you can see, they fly which means these beetles can come in from up to five miles away. So even if you are able to uh, prevent the grubs from growing in your lawn, they can still fly in from your neighbors. And here in uh, a suburban area like I'm in, uh, it doesn't really matter how much you treat, you can still uh, quickly become infested with the Japanese beetle. Now, what are some other uh, effective methods to use uh, against the Japanese beetle? Well, with some limited success, um, I would recommend getting a, a neem oil. Um, now, when you do buy a neem oil, make sure you're getting a high quality cold pressed neem oil. Uh, a lot of the processed neem oils that you find um, in your big box stores and garden centers have been processed and they um, actually remove the active ingredient, which is the azadiractin, from the neem oil. Why they would do that, I it's completely beyond me. Uh, but you know, a good brand like Dynagrow, uh, anything 100% cold pressed uh, is gonna be far more effective than um, any of the other neem type sprays that you'll find in a garden center. The cold pressed neem oil uh, will put a, uh, a, a coating on the leaf. So I think it makes it a little bit less attractive for the insects to chew on. And the azadiractin that is in the neem oil is actually um, will stop the insect from from eating. It'll stop it from wanting to eat. So uh, with some limited success, I have been using neem oil. Um, I sprayed heavily last night with neem oil. Um, I am still seeing the Japanese beetles on my plants, but I'm not seeing a lot of damage. So they don't seem to be feeding on them quite as much. So uh, as far as the neem oil is concerned, I don't think it's going to get them, get rid of them from your garden, but it may slow them down as far as chewing everything up. Now, of course, neem oil is probably my number one go-to for organic methods. Uh, you could also put down a diatomaceous earth, uh, which might slow them down, but I don't think it's going to stop them completely. Uh, a lot of fruit farmers um, and orchards swear by using the kaolin clay, uh, which I think would probably work fairly well. It's just a spray clay uh, that you spray on the leaves, uh, which will basically make them inedible to uh, insects, including the Japanese beetle. And of course, uh, the, the last resort, as far as I'm concerned, would be using something like a seven dust or a carbaryl product. Uh, these are indiscriminate. So when you put these down, these will kill everything. Good insects, bad insects, pollinators, everything. So uh, I really, the only time I pull this out is when I have an infestation that's so bad that it's, it's going to mean life or death for my, for my crops. So, uh, you know, I really don't, don't recommend this and I'll probably make a, a whole nother video on seven dust. Uh, and I won't use this on anything uh, that will be harvested within four weeks. So, uh, you know, if I've got tomatoes on my plants and I've got a, an insect problem on my tomatoes, I won't use this because um, it will not be washed away in time for harvest. So there's a, there's a safe window where you can get away with using this stuff and uh, to be able to consume your produce. And it's, um, it's a fairly, it's a fairly large um, area of time where you have to wait after applying this. So uh, very last resort, um, I might consider putting this on my corn just because there is so much time uh, between now and harvest. 
Uh, however, I seem to have controlled them fairly well in my corn patch, so um, I'm not going to do that. Um, again, guys, the use use the carbaryl, use the seven or any other uh, indiscriminate or chemical pesticides with extreme caution. Um, I really don't recommend them, and uh, they are to be used for the last resort only. Now there is uh, one more product that you can find that will help you, um, well, may help you control the Japanese beetle, and that is the pheromone traps. Uh, now the traps, you want to be very judicious with those, and it's really going to depend on your situation. Uh, here in the suburbs, I don't really have room to for a trap because you really need to keep those traps a very long distance away from the plants that you want to protect and I just don't have that much space on an eighth acre lot um, I would literally have to put it a couple neighbors down and I don't think they'd be very happy with me uh, if I did that so the the pheromone traps although they work great uh, at, for pulling the uh, the Japanese beetle to them uh, it can also attract beetles that uh, normally wouldn't have come to the area anyway. So the, you know, the beetles can fly up to five miles. So if I were to hang a beetle trap here in the middle of the Bruce City Garden, chances are I could pull in um, every Japanese beetle upwind within a five mile radius and end up causing more damage to the garden. So uh, you got to be careful with those. Uh, I think there's some university studies out there that say although the Japanese beetle traps are very effective at catching Japanese beetles, they're not terribly effective at preventing the damage that's caused by them because if used improperly, it will actually bring Japanese beetles to your area. So, uh, you know, if you lived out in the country and had acreage and uh, you could keep the trap several hundred yards away from the plants that you want to protect, uh, I think the Japanese beetle traps are an effective uh, method, and I, I would suggest that. Uh, here in a city or suburban environment like I have, absolutely not. Um, I, don't, I don't recommend using traps in a small environment like this. You're just going to draw them to your garden and cause more damage in the long run. Now, to really help prevent Japanese beetle infestations, it helps to know the life cycle of the beetle. Uh, so... In the, in the spring, or when the weather gets above about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the, uh, the larvae will begin to become active in the ground, and, and they're just grubs. And uh, as the weather warms up, the larvae will continue to feed on the roots of turf grass and uh, roots of plants. They'll emerge, and you've got about a six-week period where you, where you will see active Japanese beetles um, out in the open and what they're doing during this time is feeding and mating uh, and again the pheromones the mating pheromones are extremely strong and I'm just watching these things fly through the garden right now as we speak um, but anyway so they're feeding and they're mating and once the female is mated um, it will lay her eggs uh, in the ground or on your turf grass uh, those eggs will burrow in and uh, eat the roots of the turf grass again and find a nice place to hibernate for the winter. Um, they will hibernate through the winter and again in the spring, uh, once the soil temperature has reached 50 degrees, they will begin to feed and emerge once again. And it's just a yearly cycle. Now, with that being said, uh, another great way to help control the Japanese beetle is to treat the turf grass. So there are several uh, grubicides out there um, and of course, those are, are chemical, um, chemical treatments, uh, which are extremely effective. They work very well. Now, that's completely up to you what you want to use um, on, your, on your lawn or on your turf grass. Um, I can't tell you what to use. Uh, there are a couple of organic um, methods that you can use. One would be the uh, milky spore. Uh, which there seems to be some debate on how effective the milky spore is at treating um, Japanese beetle grubs. Uh, and also there are uh, nematodes, uh, beneficial nematodes that you can add uh, to your turf grass as well, uh, which will greatly uh, reduce the number of Japanese beetle grubs uh, in your turf grass. 
And really, that's one of the best places to prevent it. Uh, you know, you get get to those beetles in their grub stage, in their larval stage, uh, before they ever emerge. Um, that's really going to help you out as far as controlling them uh, when they are active. Now, how can you tell if you have Japanese beetle grubs uh, in your turf grass or in your lawn? Uh, there's some fairly telltale signs, especially patchiness. Uh, so you'll see patches um, in your lawn, uh, irregular patches that seem to spread over time. That's a really good sign. It's a really good giveaway. Um, if, you're, if your area has uh, skunks and perhaps possums native to it, you'll see where the lawn has been dug up. Uh, those animals are, will actually feed on their grubs, so they'll dig, your, they'll dig your lawn up basically looking for them. So if you notice a lot of turf grass damage, chances are there's um, animals that are digging those grubs up. So that's also a very good indicator that perhaps you have an infestation uh, that you can control through um, turf grass applications. All right, guys, so unfortunately, there's no one solution for Japanese beetle control. Um, it's really going to require a multifaceted um, approach, and that's going to be hand picking, uh, treating your lawns, and perhaps using uh, organic or chemical pesticides in order to keep them under control. Uh, really, my number one advice to you is get ahead of the beetles. Uh, make sure you're out in your garden for the period of time that the beetles are active. Uh, the quicker you can get them off your plants and get rid of them, uh, the less opportunity they have to release those pheromones to tell all their friends that there's something good in your garden to eat. Now, with that being said, guys, hang in there. I know, I feel your pain. I've been through it. They're a huge pain in the butt. But uh, really, if you just stay on top of them, you've got about a six-week window where they're going to be active. And then after that, they'll be gone for the season. Um, and then again, in late summer, early fall, go ahead and treat your lawn. And uh, I would almost recommend treating your lawn again in the spring uh, for grub control. And uh, you know, if you can get your neighbors on board with that as well, that's really gonna help out um, all the way around and uh, everybody will be much happier come next uh, Japanese beetle season. All right, guys, hey, thanks for joining me here again today in the Bruce City Garden. Um, I hope I gave you a little bit of helpful information and uh, maybe shown you a few ways that you can help uh, prevent the Japanese beetle infestation in your garden. And like I said, guys, don't give up the fight. It's going to be about a six week window where you have to deal with these things. And we're all in the same boat. Uh, I imagine anybody watching this video has got the exact same problem. So uh, with a little bit of perseverance, uh, we can definitely help eliminate these things from the garden and uh, prevent as much damage as possible. All right, guys, get out there, pick some beetles, keep that garden happy and thriving. And until next time, guys, we'll see you.